I'm delighted to be able to talk in the virtual video presentation. In my presentation, I will briefly review the validation of heat treatment simulation. This simulation has advanced to the stage where some commercial software is available. This realization has been contributed by the validation of the simulation functions. I will explain three examples of our validation due to time constraints. Before that, I will give an overview of the ASM's V&V guide and heat treatment simulation. Today, computer simulation is widely used in industry as a powerful tool, and there is growing interest in its reliability. As a result, ASM published the guide for verification and validation in the computational solid mechanics in 2006. This includes a schematic diagram shown here. First, both the mathematical and the physical models are created as conceptual models that abstract the reality of interest. The computational model is created from a mathematical model based on method, such as the finite element method. And the code is verified in this process. Then, the set problem is simulated using the computational model for the result, while the calculation is verified. Simulation outcomes are obtained by quantifying the uncertainty of the simulation result. On the other hand, the experiment of the for validation is designed using the physical model and also preliminary calculation by the computational model. This experiment obtained experimental outcomes after quantifying uncertainty due to various factors by repeating the experiment. Simulation and experimental outcomes are validated by comparing them quantitatively. If the agreement is not met acceptably, another conceptual model should be tried again. Some of the functions of heat treatment simulation are common to those of computational solid mechanics, so this guide may help to validate our simulation. This figure shows a concept of heat treatment simulation system. This simulation uses a computational model created from a mathematical model of phenomena due to heat treatment. The module for predicting microstructure change is typically placed at a location that controls the analysis modules by the finite element method. The FEM modules simulate and phenomena related to heat transfer, diffusion, solid mechanics, and electromagnetics. The mixture law module is provided at the position between the predicting microstructure changes and FEM modules. This predicts material property data of mixture and transfers them to the fine FEM modules. I'd like to explain the uh, structure and movement of the heat treatment simulation system more concretely. Phenomena during the heat treatment are uh, simulated by coupling the prediction module of microstructure change to the analysis modules. First, temperature calculated by heat transfer analysis is transferred to other modules. Using the new temperature, the module of predicting microstructure change will obtain the latent heat, while the electromagnetic analysis calculates joules heat using the new temperature. The predicted concentration rate 
due to the participation will be transformed to diffusion analysis, which will obtain the new concentration. On the other hand, the stress strain analysis will use the thermal strain, phase transformation strain, and transformation plastic strain, and diffusion strain for obtaining the stress and heat due to work. As described before, using boring fraction of phase and material property, the mixture rule law module calculate property of the mixture for the analysis modules. This figure depicts the relationship of stress strain and distortion generated in parts, which is used in heat treatment simulation. First, the volume changes due to temperature and concentration uh, expressed as the thermal and diffusion strains, respectively. In the case of phase transformation, the resulting volume change is represented as transformation strain, and the related plastic behavior is described as transformation plastic strain, while produced elastic strain related to the stress directory. The deviatoric components of stress contribute to generate plastic, transformation plastic, and creep strains. The sum of the various strain mentioned above is the total strain, which relate to the distortion of the parts. The relationship shown in this figure are useful for explaining the cause of the distortion and residual stress. I'd like to give an example of the validation performed on the code of the heat treatment simulation that I was involved in. For simplicity, some validations were performed only on the function of the heat transfer or diffusion coupled with the prediction of the microstructure changes. Others are mostly based on the published validation experiments using specimen with simple shape such as cylinders, plates, and rings. This shows 12 examples, but I will introduce three surrounded by a red frame. Christiansen and Sumos gas nitrated small specimens of austenitic stainless steel at 445 degrees of Celsius for 22 hours and confirmed that the expanded austenite was formed near the surface. A profile of the nitrogen sublattice concentration was obtained experimentally at 1.41 of nitriding potential shown by the square markers. The simulation, the nitrogen diffusion at the three stages of potential as shown in the solid lines. The experiment and simulation results were used to validate our simulation code. Our simulated nitrogen concentration in osonite uh, uh, shown separately as uh, M, and this, that is mobile condition in the dotted lines, and uh, M plus I, that is mobile plus immobile condition in the dashed line. The mobile and uh, immobile condition correspond to the state that nitrogen movement in osnet is uh, possible and impossible respectively. It is clear that uh, the distribution under the mobile plus immobile condition agree with 
the simulated result by Christiansen and Somers. Christiansen and Somers measure the in-depth residual stress in this specimen of orthonitic stainless steel after gas nitriding at the same condition as the previous problem. These measures are uh, indicated by the markers in the field. Our simulation expressed creep phenomena using the Norton's equation. In the simulated result stress curve, the presence or absence of consideration of the creep phenomena is distinguished by the with creep and without creep region. The former gives a prediction close to the experimental value. Since that all nitrided uh, stainless steel plate from only one side with uh, low energy implantation and in situ measured its diffraction changes. Dimensions of the specimen was 10 mm in width, uh, 30 mm in length, and 1 mm in thickness. The specimen was nitrided for uh, 63 minutes at 400 degrees uh, Celsius, and the temperature was kept for uh, 19 minutes after the implantation was stopped. Since at all measure the nitrogen concentration at 63 minutes as shown in the diamond shape markers. Nitrogen concentration distribution by our simulation code uh, showed as subject lines uh, with markers. Simulated distribution at 63 minutes agree with the measured one roughly. Curvature changes of the plate diffraction measured in situ by scenes at all during night riding uh, shown as a blue solid line. While our simulation code obtained the result as shown in the red solid line when considering the creep effect. Both curves show the same tendency. The simulation without creep, as shown in the yellow solid line, suggests that the creep phenomenon is effective. Hendrix and Hato experimented and simulated carving in the steel plates, which were carbonized on the single side and oil quenched. Dimensions of the plate were specified as 100 mm in length, 20 mm in width, and four kind values in thickness. And the surface of the plate was copper plated for anti carburizing Larger deflection was observed in the uh, thinner specimens after the process. This simulation obtained zero diffraction inside the uh, furnace and positive diffraction after the process. The same experiment was simulated by Plantry et al. and published in 2003. They ob obtained final diffraction agreed with, well with experiment. While specific deflection were predicted inside furnace as described later. Our group conducted experiment and simulations to investigate the works by Hendrickson et al. and Pantry et al. in detail. Specimens made of the chromium steel have dimensions of 
100 mm in length and 20 mm in width and 1 to 2.5 and uh, 5 mm in thickness. One side and side surfaces of the specimen were copper plated for preventing cabalization. The specimens were cabalized and pinched under the typical condition. Curves in the processed steel plate had different specific curves as shown in the field. These have the same trend as the previous work. Our code simulated the carving in the plates using the 2D generalized plane strength model. This slide shows the model of the 1mm thickness plate. Cabalized and anti-cabalized conditions were specified. Our simulation obtained about 4 mm deflection inside furnace. After quenching, the deflection degrees from the vicinity of the mountain site generation start point to the minimum value. The value then increased and reached to the about 8 mm at room temperature. On the other hand, simulated deflection by planetary at all shows 8 mm at high temperature and the same value at the room temperature. There is a discrepancy in the deflection inside the furnace. Our experimental results include carbon concentration distribution. Diffusion storing along thickness can be predicted from the carbon concentration distribution and also night density data with carbon concentration dependency. This diffusion strain distribution suggests around 4 mm deflection of plate inside furnace by manual calculation. On the other hand, the considerable deflection in the specimen at high temperature was clarified by the photograph taken inside another furnace with a people. The carbon potential in this experiment was somewhat different from the previous case. I'd like to summarize my talk. Our validation of the heat treatment simulation did not fully reflect the ASM VNV guide. However, this review is useful for understanding what theme setting are effective for validation in this field. Furthermore, it served as a reference for selecting effective output in comparison between validation experiment and simulations. In order to improve the reliability of heat treatment simulation, it is important to carry out a wide range of validation based on effectively designed experiments. The result of these validation studies will be made public and will be used to improve the system and educate users. Thank you.